Hi, welcome to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Oriel. Today we're doing this to check out ready with me, and I have a full face of new products that I'd like to share with you guys. I also talk a little bit about why I was gone for a hot minute there on YouTube. So if you want to know all those things on how to get this face of makeup, keep on watching. We're getting into it right now. All right, so as we are getting started, I'm going to apply a little bit of sun cream. And before we talk about the actual kind of sun cream it is, I figure it'd be easier to just show you guys putting it putting it on. <laughs> show you guys me putting it on, oh my god. And then um, as it kind of sinks into the skin, I know we should be waiting like a really long time. I'm not going to wait the seven minutes, but um, as we let it soak in, we can talk a little bit about product. And you can see that it's not... Um, there's no residual product left on my fingers, and everything has really soaked into the skin. So this is the A Pew Pure Block Daily Sun Cream. I think it cost me $6.99 on Amazon for 1.59 fluid ounces. So you're getting like a good, decent size of product in a really small footprint. It's got SPF 45 PA++++, PA++++, so just three UVA protections, but it's really, really good, really accessible. I like this a lot. Let me know if you guys would like to see a sunscreen comparison video. That's something that I have been really, really looking into more often, and it's really kind of changed how I do makeup or don't do makeup. And I have a lot of really awesome recommendations, and I think five or so products is enough for me to kind of really sit down and tell you my feelings, my opinions. It would also give me a chance to do some really review-driven videos, so I'm excited to share that with you guys. But in the meantime, I also want to talk a little bit about why I've been away from YouTube. I'm going to do a little bit of priming as we talk. Actually, no, I'm not going to do priming. I'm just going to uh, go into my brand new uh, Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator. I've heard amazing things about this product. So I picked it up. This is a full face, by the way, <laughs> of new stuff. And I am not going to use as much as I used to. So yesterday I used a really big blob, and I think maybe that's why it didn't turn out really good. <laughs> I think you're supposed to use a small amount. Um, uh, what's new? Me being heavy-handed. So I have a pretty big blob here, but I'm going to share it out with a sponge as we chat. And I don't have a mirror, so I'm going to use a viewfinder. Okay, let's talk about why I've been missing off um, YouTube for a couple weeks. To be fair, I don't think the break was as long as... I mean, I don't know. I can't tell to you guys how it feels. But to me, it feels like my break lasted a really, 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 really long time. And I was really irresponsible, um, if you want to say that in quotes. Like, I completely neglected you guys. I did all these things wrong. Um, and then I told my friend that I took two weeks off of YouTube. And she was like, is that considered a break? I think plenty of people will just stop you uploading for a little bit, especially if they're on the smaller side. So I'll explain a little bit what happened um, and why I went a little bit radio silence. First of all, um, mental health struggles. I think I've talked to you guys about that. I'm not going to harp too much on the mental health stuff because we get it. We get it. I have problems with my brain. Um, just know that I'm, I'm working on them. Uh, it can be really frustrating to record yourself multiple times thinking that you are doing something in a way that seems qualified, that looks good, and then you look at the footage and actually you hate the way that you look and you hate the way that you sound and the video footage isn't what you think it is. And sometimes it's um, internal, sometimes it's like real, like I had lipstick on my teeth the entire time, or there was a giant stain on my shirt that I didn't notice, or you know, something like objectively did go wrong and so I couldn't use the footage. And that was one layer of the product on my skin. I'm now going to go into that incognito uh, concealer. I wear the shade light beige and in this one I wore the shade fair you know sometimes it's me perceiving an issue sometimes it's that they're actually being an issue and then sometimes it's the fact that the footage gets corrupted so there's all kinds of things that have made filming happen in a way that was like really frustrating and obviously if I really wanted to persevere I could have just scrapped the stuff that was bad and re-recorded it you know like I'm not saying that it was hard for me to record and therefore it was impossible for me to record and upload videos um, it's just that I'm balancing YouTube on top of many other commitments, and so when I carve out a time to film and it doesn't work out, it really just takes a lot out of me, and I don't really want to do it again. Um, so that's, that's on me, of course. I'm not saying that that's like a universal experience, because I'm sure if I had more drive, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> One thing is it was a little bit of a rough patch to get me back on the YouTube grind once I fell off a little bit, and because I uploaded so often, you know, once I said, screw it, I'm not going to upload for a couple weeks, <laughs> I really felt my mental state bettering, honestly. Like, um, the only reason why I can compare two side gigs together is because my nail business, I haven't stopped that at all. I haven't taken a single break from my nail business 
it's still been front and foremost. I think the reason why is because it has nothing to do with my appearance. Um, yeah, I, I didn't think I was so affected by my self-image issues. Um, you know, people are always like, how are you on YouTube if you have low self-esteem? The answer is, it's hard. <laughs> um, but just like going to work is hard or doing things are, are hard doesn't mean you don't do them. Like, I still want to talk about makeup and my love for makeup on YouTube. It's just that it's hard to do it sometimes. Does that make sense? For powder, and ooh, <laughs> this is brand new and it's already covered in fingerprints. This is the number seven. Okay, wipe that off a little bit. This is the number seven triple action finish, finishing powder light. Oh, the color is in light. It's a finishing powder. This is the powder. It's got like a really nice beefy container. You've got the nice little embossing. I picked this up because, of course, Jessica Braun recommended it. And I was like, if Jessica Braun is recommending something, it's probably really, really good. And I am going to use these little um, Real Technique, what are these, like, retractable brushes? I actually really like these guys. I think they're so cute. Um, the fact that they are retractable means that they're really, really sanitary. I have used these to travel. By travel, I mean, like, to keep in my bag as I go to work. But I'm just going to set my face around the under eyes because I've been noticing that sometimes my mascara will smudge under there. And that definitely just blurred and mattified everything. And around the T-zone, too. And you can definitely see that that blurred the area around my nose. I mean, it's not, like, huge. <laughs> you can definitely still see my pores, but it's not as dramatic as before. Okay, I don't have anything new for brows, obviously, so I think I'm just going to fill them in really quickly. This is my uh, Goof Proof Brow Pencil. I've got a little bit of this product left. Not much, just a small amount. So we are going to... Oh, is this one of those products you can't scroll down? No, we're good. <laughs> my word, it is so noisy outside my window right now. I'm so sorry. There's nothing um, I hate more than, honestly, living in the city. We are moving in August, so that's another thing that I'm excited for. Oh, I forgot to mention, work has been crazy. It's been standardized test season all year long, like literally from the start of 2021 until the end of the year. There's some kind of testing going on. And so, yeah, work has just been, like regular work has just been insanity. I don't know if you can see my eyebrows going out, but those are a disgrace. What do you guys do when your eyebrows are going out? Do you just like leave them? Why is that literally the loudest truck I've ever heard in my life? Okay, let's talk a little bit about the finish of today's look. Um, I feel like maybe the color match isn't perfect. I feel like I'm a lot more red on the face than on my neck. So this might be a little bit too cool toned for me, like it's too peachy. But I do like the finish. You can definitely still see my freckles and my acne. Let's be real, this is not acne, this is freckles. I mean, let's be real, this is not freckles, this is acne. And another reason why I haven't really been wearing makeup or been on YouTube is because I haven't had the chance to really wear makeup. I've been on Curology dealing with my hormonal acne. That's what I found out it was. It is not. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to have to go like through this. I don't think there's a way for us to beat the noise pollution. Um, so I uh, naively thought that my acne was caused by just, you know, maybe I didn't have a clean skincare routine or something, which is like absurd. I really shouldn't have thought that because obviously I care a lot about my skincare routine. Um, no, I tried Curology. Turns out it's hormonal and most of your hormonal acne can't really be mitigated unless you address the hormones that are in imbalance in your body. So if I'm just talking topically, she, she gave me a couple of things to work on and it's really, really sensitized my skin. And I want to say it's like hurt my skin barrier a little bit. Like I have these like heat rashes. They're not heat rashes, but they're very clearly like chemical rashes like across my cheekbones. And um, I talked to my dermatologist and she said that kind of irritation is normal at first. We persevere for a couple weeks and then hopefully it'll get better. But yeah, so that's what I've been working through and I didn't want to put a ton of makeup on my face. Of course, while I'm at work, wearing a mask, even, you know, with the new guidelines and stuff. I work in a school, so <laughs> kids aren't vaccinated yet. And so um, I don't really wear foundation anyway. So it's really just been my eyes. I haven't done anything exciting, and I don't want to do much exciting stuff. Um, but anyway, I do want to come on here and be back and be present. So today, I'm really, really excited to put a couple of things to the test. Um, so what do we have that's new? I have a blush that's new. This is the Milani Cheek Kiss Blush. This is the... Nude kiss. <laughs> I was like, where is the color? Um, these blushes are actually much nicer than I thought they were going to be. Um, and then I didn't buy any other color cosmetics recently besides this palette. Or shall I say, nothing has arrived yet besides this palette. I also have um, my Adept Cosmetics Plain Jane palette, which I'm going to do a totally separate video on. I've depotted some of the shades just for easy access, but I've literally never had indie shadows before. Like, 
this like wow 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 um so i'm not gonna spoil anything for this palette obviously it's a i believe a 12 pan palette so there's some shades that i've taken out and i've left in their original packaging for the look of love palette i bought the milani all-inclusive face palette as well so we're gonna do a side by side it'll be really fun because i've seen some comparisons but not on asian skin tones i believe i know allura beauty did one with just the regular product but yeah so we're gonna start with a little bit of cream blush i really want to look a really particular way today <laughs> and that way and i want the blush to be literally across my cheeks I saw this photo from this girl called Anne Steph on Instagram, and she is like a makeup icon. I mean, she's a beauty icon. She's so beautiful. I'm pretty sure she filters her pictures and edits them to high hell. Um, from what I can tell, it seems to be pretty normal in China to do that. Like, it, it's not um, expected that you you maintain your images like natural, naturally. It's kind of like everyone edits their photos, and everyone sees the whole process as like a work of art, not just like you as a work of art, does that make sense? So I'm applying my blush kind of in the way that she did, but not as elegantly. Oh yeah, also I've been like gaining a ton of weight. So I don't have like the best confidence when it comes to being on camera. It's just like a, a ton of things. Okay, so here is the product. I'm gonna go in with bronzer first because, oh, I shouldn't have set my face because there was a face setting powder here. I'm gonna go in with bronzer first. And of course, Charlotte Tilbury and bronzer is like, one of my favorite combinations ever. She does such a good bronzer. The colors are always just so natural. And especially with my skin tone, I think a lot of bronzers can make me look really dirty really quickly. Um, but I have the trust that this does not look dirty. So how have you guys been? I have been doing much better, honestly. Although I've talked about like my self-image being poor and <laughs> not having um, much sleep. Oh, the other thing that has stopped me from uh, filming is my husband is now on night shift and you guys know us we're in a one bedroom apartment <laughs> sharing a space and so when I film I film in the bedroom and he sleeps while I can film so there's literally no way for me to film in a way that doesn't disrupt him and doesn't include his snoring in my video so I recorded three videos last week that all had his snoring in it and so for obvious reason I couldn't include that as my final cut footage yeah it's just like another thing it's been happening for like three ish weeks now it's just hard man it's I don't know I feel like when you have people living together in a really small space everyone has to concede you know like it's really like a, a joint effort to make things work I'm applying the number three eyeshadow the matte one uh, with a general crease brush. This is just a Blender Pro from Sony G. Super easy color. You can definitely see it's different from the bronzer though. It looks a lot more cool toned. Obviously a lot more pigmented. I love Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows, honestly. To me, they are way better than Pat McGrath for my purposes, just because Pat McGrath, her eyeshadows are super pigmented. They're pigmented, they're dark, they're, you know, really baba voomy, you know? They're not meant to be subtle. She does, like, you know, insane runway looks. Whereas I think Charlotte Tilbury, her demographic is like old women who want to look glam. And that's me. I feel like that, you know? I don't want anything super, super intense. I just want something that works, that's cute, um, that's, you know, gentle and soft. I'm going to go into the cheek color, actually, which is this really pretty coral with a little bit of shimmer in it. I'm going to go into the edges of this product just to feather that out. Kind of as a transition for our transition, if that makes sense. Super, super fast. And for the eyes, I'm going to go straight into the glitter. Uh, no, we'll do, okay, we'll do this the right way. I'll apply the satin shade first, which is super pretty, right? Number two, yes, I use both hands when I do my makeup, including my left hand. And then number one, which is this, like, glitter topper. Ooh, ooh, super, super pretty. I love her glitter toppers. I think they are so special. I mean... Not that they're special, I just love a good glitter topper, and I find that they're kind of hard to find if you're not looking high-end. Let me know if you guys have any sheer glitter toppers that you can find at the drugstore or at a more affordable price point, because I have yet to see a bunch of them that are accessible. For cheeks, we're going to start with a little bit of highlight. I'm going to go back into my retractable brush, make it a little bit smaller. The only thing I have to say about these brushes is that the button is, like, really hard to press, and it really hurts. Like, it's kind of painful. But I'm going to shrink this to be the size of the pan here. Go into number five face and sweep on the highlight. Yeah, it's a vanilla highlight. It's super pretty. I applied a little too much, I think, because this is a cream blush, so it's holding onto the product really well. But it is really, really pretty and juicy. 
And then for cheek, I'm going to apply a little bit of the, um, the blush on top just to smooth everything out. And then we're going to take a Mel Johnson trick and we're going to take the face powder on number seven. And we're going to buff over everything. Now, I've heard this from Mel Thompson. Did I say Mel Johnson? Mel Thompson. She buffs because I think it like blends everything. I've never tried it with success, I guess. I don't really see a difference. I mean, I do see a little bit more coverage, shall I say? I don't know if I see more coverage, but I definitely see an evening out of my forehead. Like, my forehead pores are gone. So, that's that's that. All right, let's talk lips. Shall we talk lips? For lips, I picked up the Revlon, well, we gotta go backwards. I got the Revlon Satin Ink Colorstay, they're liquid lipsticks, but they are shiny and they are shiny forever. Like, they're super, super nice. I picked the one in Fire and Ice up first. I thought I liked the idea of a really bright red, um, but then I was like, wait a minute, I, I don't actually like that very much. So, we're gonna try this one. This is in the shade Silky Sienna. Silky Sienna. I don't actually know what a Sienna is. Is that a thing? Is that a person? Um, and I'm gonna show you guys how this goes on and how it stays on. So you can see it kind of goes on like a gloss. I wiped off my um, wand just so I can use it as like a lip brush. Okay, so this is a layer of this color, Silky Sienna on the lips. And you can see that it's really glossy, right? It's really glossy, it's really shiny. I didn't even put like a thick layer on. If you really lacquer it on, it can build on itself. So you can see now that's like full coverage. So you can really see that it has that soft, buttery consistency. It doesn't feel um, sticky or dry. It doesn't have a dry down at all. It just feels like a gloss, which to me feels absolutely incredible. The only thing about this line is that I don't think it has a ton of colors. IMO, the colors all lean pretty dark, and I wonder why that's the case. I feel like with Maybelline liquid lipsticks, they also lean pretty dark, so I wonder if formulating liquid lipsticks that are unpatchy and unproblematic is like a difficult process. I'm just going to go with my Chanel eyeliner because I'm so close to being done and I just want to use it up today or soon. I hate having products that are semi-finished in my makeup bag or in my makeup area because even if they're great products, they're just, you know, so ready to be gone and I just want that satisfying feeling of using a product up, you know? The satisfying feeling of using a product up and putting it in my empties surpasses any love I would naturally have for the product itself. And so in a moment of, like, pride, I purchased the Milani, I think it's called Stay All Day liners or something. They're called favorites. I haven't seen them in my drugstore because my local CVS is terrible and doesn't have anything and everything is locked up because we're next to a high school and apparently the high schoolers steal. So the beauty section near me is terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I purchased the, the red one and the navy one from their website. So they should be arriving soon with that face palette, so we'll do a comparison of the look that you can get here and the look that you would get from the $15 face palette. So yes, she's finally an empty, she's done. I mean, there's a little tiny nub at the very, very end, but I don't think it's like any meaningful amount of eyeliner. Maybe I can get one more day out of it, but yeah, soft eyeline, let's do mascara. New to me mascara is the Maybelline Sky High in the non-waterproof version. Oh my God, this is good. I love the effect, but I definitely think this is a polarizing product. This gives your lashes a chance to cling together and look longer at the same time. <laughs> what that means is by the end of this, I have like, let's say I have 30 lashes on my you know, lash line. By the end of it, it looks like I've got 20 or 15 of them and they're all like way longer than they really are. I don't mind that. You know, I'm not getting like three lashes. I feel like people have been talking about this mascara as if it is going to get rid of all your lashes and make it like one unilash. <laughs> it's not that bad. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer to you guys and show you exactly what I mean. You guys see how it does definitely cling your lashes together, but not in a way that is like absurd. I like this look. I know this is like a controversial thing and I'm applying more and more coats, but I like that it builds on itself. I like that it creates length where I usually don't have length. And of course, if I look up, it looks terrible. But if I look forward, you can really see my eyelashes, which is like not something that I can usually say. I usually don't have any discernible eyelashes. So this feels actually really good to me. I, surprisingly, am actually like almost running out of this product. I'm definitely almost running out of my Charlotte Tilbury mascara. So I'm gonna show you how this builds on itself. If you guys haven't already purchased this, I mean, maybe you're not interested because I feel like anyone who wanted to try this mascara has already gotten their heads on it. It's like such a viral product. It builds on itself. It's not tubing. So I thought it was a tubing mascara. It's not. It also does not come off with anything. I guess you could use like a high-end makeup remover, like a Lancome by Facile or like one from MAC. 
but I just use my cellar water and oil cleanser. I don't have like a separate, you know, like two phase makeup remover product. I like to keep my, you know, my routine as simple as possible. Can you believe it? I do. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm personally not partial to the fact that this is really, really hard to take off at night, but I am partial to the fact that the, the lashes, my lord, my lashes look much longer than, than they ever would naturally with regular mascara so that's that um do i have anything else i'm going to show you in terms of i don't have anything else that is new i do have a lipstick but i'm going to be showing this to you guys in a project pan video so i don't want to spoil anything for that i am going to seal my face in with the airbrush flawless setting spray i love this product it's so good truly when you put this on nothing is budging and we just got the mandate that vaccinated folks don't have to wear masks in public so what that means is I may be able to bust out my full face of makeup again and have people admire me for my beautiful lip and cheek combinations, which have been languishing for the last year and a half. Oh, I guess it's just been a year. Wow, it feels much longer. Okay, I am going to... <laughs> and I'll be right back with the outro. Okay, so hopefully that was a really fun to check it ready with me for you guys as well. I loved sitting back down and putting on a full face of makeup, trying on all the new stuff that I've kind of accumulated over the past few weeks. I'm sorry that I've been absent. Um, you know, hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight as to like why it's been a little bit frustrating for me to film this combination of body dysmorphia and poor self-image, having technical issues, my husband starting the night shift, me being busy at work, just lots of different things that have made it so I have neglected you guys and I'm so, so, so sorry. Um, hopefully with some better planning, I will be able to figure out a way for this stuff to not be such an impediment to filming going forward. Um, but not many things are changing right now. So my husband is still on night shift. I still hate the way I fucking look and um yeah all those other things are still in place but I did want to just check in at least once and um do my best to film this weekend for you guys and yeah hopefully um that is good enough for now <laughs> I love you and I will see you in a bit bye guys